Ladies and gentlemen, this is the hurricane that really concerns me, Hurricane Ian, because it is going in a path where my family that lives down there in Florida will be impacted. And my subscribers down there as well. So I am definitely going to keep an eye on this one because it does not look so good for Florida. And I know how dangerous, you know, a lot of people don't realize when hurricanes hit in the fall, they tend to be a lot more powerful than the ones that you'll see in the beginning of hurricane season. The ones towards the end are the strongest. So when I saw this one coming and they're talking about how Florida is going to take a direct hit and they're expecting it to reach up to a category four in strength. Ooh, I just hope when it makes landfall, it's still not a four because if it is, it's going to be a lot of destruction down there in Florida. You know, um, I, I often from time to time talk about my uncle. My uncle is my father's baby brother. And he is really my only blood uncle left. Now I do have other uncles y'all, but they're uncles by marriage, you know? So, you know, that's why I have that special connection with him. And I definitely, um, I am concerned, you know, because he is up in age. So Ian is the ninth storm of 2022 Atlantic hurricane season forecasts and is expected to reach up to a category four hurricane strength before making landfall in Florida. Now, according to this map, it's a Thursday, but they're saying, you know, depending on how much speed it picks up, it could be before then. So if it does, this will be the first major hurricane impact on the state. The last time they had a, a really hard direct hit was in 2018. Ian was located about 255 miles south of Kingston, Jamaica, as of 6 p.m. Saturday and moving west 16 miles an hour, according to the National Hurricane Center. The significant strength is forecast. Um, Boy, I, I just hope it don't get as bad as I know it could. I really don't want to see this, but we're in that time of the year, you know? And, oh, okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, they're saying that the forecast shows that Ian is a major hurricane over the eastern gulf when it is approaching the west coast of Florida after briefly passing over Cuba at or near a uh, major hurricane strength, the center said on Friday, the entire Florida panhandle and nearly the entire west coast of the state could be at risk, according to the most recent forecast cone from the Hurricane Center. After strengthening overnight, earlier known as Tropical Depression 9, it has um, maximum sustained winds of 45 miles an hour and is forecast to reach hurricane status within the next two days as it approached the Cayman Islands early on Monday. Ian is expected to rapidly intensify and become a category three before it reaches the western part of Cuba early on Tuesday. The conditions are extremely favorable 
for strengthening and the forecast of the National Hurricane Center brings Ian to a category for hurricane over the Gulf of Mexico. Since Ian is not expected to remain over Cuba long, a little weakening is expected due to the land interaction, the Hurricane Center explained. So the forecast models as of Saturday afternoon said that Ian will make landfall on Florida's coast. Um, they also were looking at the European models uh, that shows the landfall near Tampa on Thursday morning, while the American model shows that the landfall will hit near Pensacola. Okay. So there's also um, some uncertainty with the tracking of the storm. So officials at the Hurricane Center are split with the difference between the models showing landfall north of Tampa on Thursday morning. So Governor Ron DeSantis expanded the emergency order from 24 counties to include the whole state. And he did this on Saturday, citing ongoing conditions which are projected to constitute a major disaster. The Florida Division of Emergency Management, working together with the National Hurricane Center to evaluate weather predictions, has determined there is a continuing risk of dangerous storm surge, heavy rainfall, flash floods, strong winds, hazardous sea, and isolated um, tornado activity for Florida's peninsula, and portions of the Big Bend, North Florida, and Northeast Florida. Mm -mm -mm. So they said the state level emergency will show that the National Guard could be activated. So right now the National Guard is on standby awaiting orders. Uh, President Joe Biden on Saturday approved a disaster declaration for a tropical storm, which is forecast to reach the state later this week as a hurricane. So he just got things like um, Homeland Security and FEMA in place to coordinate. And they really don't step in until after the disaster happens. Then they will step in to alleviate hardships. Uh, that's just laughable, y'all. You know, we had Hurricane Sandy here, and I can tell you FEMA was absolutely useless. <laughs> they, were, they were useless. So, y'all, you know, I, I will keep everybody in my thoughts and prayers. Um, I just hope that it's not as bad as they're saying, uh, you know, there's always a chance that the storm could downgrade before it makes landfall. Now, many of you might remember in 2018, it was Hurricane Michael, which took out towns, complete towns in the panhandle. And many of the folks were living in tents. It was horrible for them. I mean, it, it literally took out, there were some, um, aerial shots where you didn't see any house standing after Michael came in there and just wiped the place out. So that was 2018. So we're talking about four years later. And now Ian could be, uh, you know, a potential disaster at this point. But y'all, please tell me what you think about this video. And I pray that anybody down in Florida, especially my subscribers, I hope that you are safe. If you get through it and you happen to have electricity, please let us know how you're doing and if you're okay. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.